Okay, here we go. We'll go three, two, and one. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. I think this is episode 302. That's right. And we've been looking forward to this one for a little while. <laughs> yeah. This per this guest is very, very hard to get a hold of and, and get on your show. Like this is this is a big, big deal for anyone listening, just just so they know, right? Way to big tease you. Way yeah. to tease it. We had to wait weeks <laughs> literally to get this guy on the show. So uh yeah, it's it's gonna be um give us uh, some give us a headline teaser there, Sean. Yeah, since I was, you've, I was, you, you actually it up. made the title "Delivering Better Words in Three Easy Steps," which was not great, but okay. <laughs> interview with Ad Zombies. Uh, I think that speaks for itself. I mean, sure, yeah. There you go. I got a lot of questions yeah. about that name, <laughs> about uh, our guest Ken, who's the, I guess, the founder and COO, yep, our CEO or whatever. I saw something on his on his screen earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I've seen some of his ads. And they caught my attention, so I reached out and said, "We got to have this guy on." Got through the gatekeeper, the gauntlet, and finally got a yes. So yeah, we're going to be bringing him on today. Should we just should we just go ahead and bring him on? Let's do it. All right. Well, welcome to the show from Ad Zombies, Ken Spanky Moskowitz. Wow, that buildup has me so nervous. Like. I, I feel like there was this anticipation. Oh, they've been waiting for weeks for this. We've well, been teasing I, this episode I, for weeks. I, I have too, because I was actually looking forward to having a beer on a Friday afternoon. You <laughs> Now, luckily, see, normally on Fridays, I'm not even in my office. Fridays, oh, okay. I'm normally doing my therapy, which is baking. Oh, yep. baking. I love what you baking? baking. What do you bake? Like, like smoking a joint baking or actually Different in the baking. kitchen that's, baking? That's, that's okay. That can mean a lot of oh. things there, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so no, I bake good. I bake bagels, breads, okay. um, you name it. If it's like a bready, yeasty thing, I mm -hmm. like to bake it. And I like um, that. And so it's like a therapeutic hobby for me. Oh wow. Well, mm -hmm. sorry to pull you away from that. Oh, no, I, I'm thrilled because <laughs> you, today I get to drink a beer. <laughs> and by the way, I feel kind of crappy. I went to the store this morning and I was looking. I wanted to make sure that I had a craft beer. Yeah. And so I got a craft beer. I got a vanilla porter. And then after I got the craft beer, which is a uh, it's a Breckenridge brewery, I realized yeah. after I got it that Breckenridge was bought out by Anheuser-Busch. So now oh. they're part of the big machine. That's uh, right. And yeah, big brand. But on the bright side, I've done ads and do ads for Anheuser-Busch for some of their products. So I kind of feel like it's OK because I'm supporting my clients. Yeah, that's right. Well, and kudos that's, to them for getting bought out. I mean, that's a dream of every uh, I mean, look entrepreneur, at, right? It happened here in Arizona to Four Peaks. <laughs> that's right. And, you know, they got yeah. bought out. So I, I'm going to open this sucker up and pour it in so I can um, so I can drink it with you. Yeah, absolutely. Start pouring. And we'll talk about each one we have and why you picked it. Uh, I'm scared to death on mine. I've never had this kind of beer before. What'd you get? And it scares me a little bit because, um, you know, Ken, we are... We are dark beer guys on this show. We're not big IPA fans. I, I like hate your style. IPAs. Yeah. Do you, do you but, remember the bitter beer face ads in like the 80s? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time That's I right. drink an IPA, I go, it's like this. Watch. Here, wait. Let me get closer to the camera just so you can see it. It's like this. <laughs> yes. I've it's, seen that face. It's like Gilbert Gottfried getting an enema. Oh, gosh. That's all you had to say is Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah. yeah. Everybody can picture that face. Yes. 100%. I'm going to try a different layout here. What does that do? Is that like, who know. controls who goes in the middle if we do that? You're in the middle. Well, I'm my that. Front and center. Hey, birthday boy, it's appropriate I want, today. I was just trying to see if it would switch like Zoom does. I haven't, we haven't never tried that. So I guess not. Go back to that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I will. Well, let you me know, zoom Sean, in for a second. Try to keep putting off your beer as long as you can. You're going to have to go. There you go. Check this out. That is crazy. <laughs> So it's called Brains. Ooh, wow. So oh, that is really zombie. Crappy. I need, I need a can of that. Can you can you ship one to me? Sure. <laughs> I don't even know where to get that. Yeah, this this is um it's Drecker. Really yeah, it's Drecker Brewing Company. Um let me throw up the old screen here. 
So I couldn't find this one on their website, but they have this thing. But check out their labels on these cans, man. Oh man, I could totally write ads for it. This is like this is like psychedelic <laughs> type that. stuff. I mean, yeah, uh, just all yeah, kinds man, of that's really good stuff. Cool stuff. See, this is as as a marketer, as a creative, this is the stuff that inspires me. When I see a brand like this that gets it, yeah, that just gets me so excited because that's the kind of stuff that I love to do. Like I it can work like, on that. Yeah, no doubt. Looks like some it, of the stuff should be on your uh on I mean, your it looks like there. Yeah, it looks like um psychedelic comic books is how yeah. I would describe kind of this this artwork. Like it's, it's like you, a, it's like somebody took some mushrooms and had a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're drinking up there. So I don't even know. I didn't even check like where are they where are they from? Um if they're local here in Texas or if they're out. But here's the thing. So this is an actual Mango prickly pear double fruity smoothie sour. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I'm drinking today, people. Um sounds so sounds good. Yeah, we'll see. So the closest one I could find on their site was the I think they have a sour, but or another brains. But now I can't this, find it. Oh man, they got some interesting names there. Yeah. Graveyard yeah, they, brains. Yeah. So this <laughs> is similar, I guess. Just it's got blackberry mines prickly pear. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to try it, but I was doing, I was reading it and it says keep refrigerated for best taste. And then I went on Reddit. I was like, oh my God, this was on the shelf when I got it. Is it going to be bad? And there's a whole debate on Reddit, whether fruity smoothie sour beers should be for, have to be refrigerated the whole time or not. Okay. First of all, Crazy. if it's in an airtight can, can't right. it just be refrigerated right before you drink it so that <laughs> that's it's, what i'm hoping <laughs> yeah because i mean this is 2023 like <clears throat> yeah we, we have technology to keep exactly. things exactly right now to be fair like Oof. it looks yeah. like a smooth it looks like that v8 fruit juice smoothie type mm. stuff that's what it looks like so we'll see what do you got over there uh jonathan then we'll finish up with our guest so i've got a uh so i don't venture out like you do sean i go to the it was all about the can for me on this one. I, I've got a Kentucky Maple Barrel Stout Ooh, from nice. the Kentucky series. Um, I don't think we've had this one. We've had several of the uh, Kentucky Bourbon series on the show from yeah. Lexington Brewing Company. But this one just, I noticed this one just uh, was released back in 2021. So that's probably why we haven't, even though yeah. we've been doing this a while since then. So somehow we missed it. But uh, looks pretty good. Twelve yeah. percent um, uh, imperial stout brewed with brown sugar for an extra kick, with flavors of roasted malt and cocoa. Uh, this brew was aged for eighteen months in a freshly decanted maple syrup bourbon barrel. So wow! But see, you got you got to do more of a James Earl Jones delivery when you read it because <laughs> when you the whole do story that, behind that beer, right? <laughs> That's right. You, I can just you know you you can see the fog and the smoke and the Kentucky hills, right? That's right. You go, Kentucky <laughs> Maple Barrel Stout is a bold imperial stout <laughs> brewed with brown sugar for extra kick with flavors of roasted malt and cocoa. You nailed it. You nailed right? it. Like you, you, you got to give it, that it a little more aroma. That is it. I you got to like give that. it some oomph. Yes. That's right. All right. Well, Ken, uh, we'll put you on the spot and talk about your beer. Tell us a little bit about it. All right. Well, it to us, but tell us a little bit. I, I did. So he already I did. Got, <laughs> did the, this is the Breckenridge Vanilla Porter. There we go. And it has, it's a roasted malt with notes of vanilla. And, and I saw it because first of all, I love porters. Mm -hmm. I, I'm one of those weird people that can drink a porter when it's 120 degrees outside uh, here in Arizona. You're on the right show. You're on the right That's show. Right. You're, you're in good company. Yeah. I, and, and for me, there is never a bad time for a porter, an ale. Like I can, I can <clears> do those heavier beers that most people are like, oh, no, that's a winter beer. What is right. a winter beer? That's like saying <laughs> you can't have eggs for dinner or steak <laughs> right. for breakfast. Like there's no exactly. such thing. Exactly. And so I, uh, I got this because I love vanilla. I love mm -hmm. porters. And um, and I'm like, ooh, I want to have something vanilla y today. All right. So this well, is more like a candy for me. We've yeah, that's that looks good. We've had a Breckenridge on here before, but it's not it's not been that one. Yeah. So I don't know. I can't remember. So what we're gonna do now, Ken, is we're gonna cheers it up and then we're gonna give it a rating from one to five on let's your see the let's see the color of your glass first. Oh, this is everyone. as black as a Coca-Cola. 
There yeah. you go. Look All at right. Sean's over there in the, the left hand corner. Yeah, yeah, yours looks more is. like a Slurpee, Sean. Like a, it does. Like a Slurpee. <laughs> All right. Well, let's cheers it up. Hit the hit the magic. Cheers. Perfect. We'll do a second one. Just there we go. Hmm. Ooh. That's nice. Interesting. All right. You know what? Wow. Okay. I'm gonna save mine. I'm gonna leave the mystery out there. Uh, so John, it, go ahead, this is Ken. You really go first. nice. This is smooth. Like this is like Charday could have made this. This is a smooth operator. <laughs> smooth. We can't use actual uh, music no, on the show. Now the song will be stuck <clears throat> in your head all day. It will be. You know what right. I like? What I like about this beer? It is smooth, but it has a nice like. It's got a real strong finish with that. You just get that vanilla on the back mm -hmm. end of it. It's really good. Like I could drink this all day. Hmm. Yeah, and five, I, one to five pints. What do you give it? Yeah, one to five. Give it? On a scale of one to five pints, you can you can use decimals. You, What's yeah. your score? <clears throat> I give this a four point one. Wow, okay, 4. solid 1. one. Wow, 4. solid. Not bad at all. All right, Jonathan, what you got up there? Oh man, this is really good. Um, I can't follow two fives in a row, um, so this is just as good as last week. But I'm going to give this one a four eight. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, All right. Yeah, go ahead. Didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. No, I just there's nothing. I don't think I've ever had any bad Kentucky Lexington Brewing Company. Yeah, bad makes, beers. So make solid stuff, sure. Um. All right. So I'm getting a little bit of echo. Anybody else hearing that? No. All right. I'm echo I free. A little bit on my end. Okay. By the um, way, what happens when you're doing your, your show and you've been drinking and you have to burp? What do you do? Mute button. Yeah. We got a oh. mute button here. So I got a mute. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Or you can just burp. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I muted. <clears throat> you don't have to do anything. You could just. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I, just, I came from a, remember, I came from a radio background. So, yeah, that's right. I, but I've never, because of that, I would never drink beer while I was yeah. in the broadcast seat. You can't do that. Yeah. It's like some regulation. Well, that's, we're breaking all the rules, so. That's okay. I like uh, but anyway, favorite. back to this this smoothie. Uh, I am shocked at how good it is. Like, I am wow. absolutely really? shocked. This tastes like something you might find at a frat party in a big bowl. Mm. Like, it actually tastes, you got the fruit. It's real fruit. Um, I can usually, you can actually see the fiber a little bit on the edge of the, like, on the glass. So, it's got real fruit in it. And it's a good, it's really tastes good. I mean, I, I'm going to give this, I am shocked, but I'm going to give this a four, eight. Wow. It's wow. really good. So it's not overly sweet though. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to try both of those because mm. I, I, I like craft beers and God knows, mm. like I, I can try, I'll try them and try them and try, like I want some of that and I want the other one just because of the can. Yeah. 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 I love uh, the art. Where did you find that, Sean? Where did you get to pick that up again? Good old H E B here. H E B. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, we're, I was gonna look where they're from. They I are that from, total wine would have it, I'm sure. Yeah, because they're in Fargo, North Dakota. That's where the brewery is. So they should be nationwide then. Yep. I will Probably. go to Total Wine this weekend. Yeah, so it's Drecker Brewing. Oh, I I've got that memorized. It's I'm right. getting one. <laughs> now this is really good. Really, really good. So I'm I'm shocked. I thought it was gonna be terrible. But it's actually pretty good. I just so. want some cans and for some artwork. I know, right? We're up in the uh, man cave. I know. I wish I'd saved every can we had on this episode. <laughs> so, so I know this wall. is a, I know this is a beer show. Right. Yeah. But I have to share something. A couple of years ago, one of my team members was on a road trip and found this wine, and had to buy a bottle and bring it back to the office. I'm going to go grab the bottle off my shelf. Okay. Because All right. it's it's one of those. Well, let me go get the bottle. Hang on. I'm literally gonna get it. <laughs> okay. That was fast. So, <laughs> Keep everything within arm's reach, don't you? Well, you know, in in my office, I've got like this half of my office is all the working <laughs> fun themed zombie stuff. Right above where I am right now, there's a zombie. 
and okay. hanging on the wall. Very cool. And but the uh, she came back with this bottle of Zombie Zin, California Zinfandel. Nice. Well, and that inspired you, right? I mean, that inspired you for it. It totally did. But here's what happened. We opened it. God, now I can't. Like, this is making me want to burp so much. It's so bad. <laughs> um, we opened the bottle because we were like, okay, we should drink this. It's Zinfandel. How bad could it be? Well, apparently that bottle had been sitting on the shelf at this little store forever because we took, like, a big sip of it, and it was total vinegar. I mean, mm. it wasn't oh, even wow. a hint of wine left in this thing. And uh, it was disgusting. So we poured it out. I washed the bottle. And now it sits on my trophy shelf of zombie finalia. Oh, I bet you get a lot of zombie stuff in the mail from clients. And I do. Every, uh, that's cool. I get some really weird stuff. Like I have a pen with a zombie chewing on the leg. And so that's on the shelf too. I Like weird that's stuff. That's awesome. That's so cool though that you, you, you know, it's such a memorable brand. I've got to know. So... For those of you catching up or figuring this out, if you, as you're listening, yeah, Ken has a company, an, an ad company called Ad Zombies. And Ken, I got to know, like, where does that name come from? Because when I first saw it, the very first time I remember seeing it, I'm like, why would I want my ads to be zombies? Like, that seems backwards. Yeah. So tell me about the name, like where the name came from. So so the name, the, the inspiration for the name is is not as cool as you'd think. Um <laughs> When the company started in more social media lies. <laughs> yeah. When the company started in 2017, uh, it was by accident. And so it was a Sunday night. So it started on a Thursday, by the way. On Sunday night, I was watching The Walking Dead and I was texting uh, Sean, who I worked with. And we were back and forth like, hey, if this thing is going to have a life, we got to give it a name. So we started coming up with weird names. He was watching at uh, Walking Dead. I was watching Walking Dead. And so we're texting. And as we're texting, the name evolved. Over a 45-minute period of time, the name Ad Zombies came to be. And wow. then we had our first like brand positioning statement, which sucked. But that's okay. It was a version one. And version one is always better than version none. Yes. So we went with that. But I think the cooler story, and I and I got to share that. This is like the second time I get to talk about that this week, which is really cool. Um, I used to be deathly afraid, and I know zombies are not real. As an adult, I can rationalize that. But I used keep to be tell, deathly, keep telling yourself that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Until one walks in, walks in behind me and like eats my brain. Um, no, I, I was terrified of zombies as a kid because my parents were they were just dumb. We went to a drive-in theater with the neighbors and the parents were in the front. The kids were all in the back and there were always two movies at a drive-in. There was an A cut and a B cut. And the B cut was the original night of a living dead night of the living dead. And it was, you know, the black and white, the, it was terrifying to me. And so there I am in the back of the car and they thought, Oh, the kids aren't going to watch this. This will be fine. I slept with a light on from about the age of three and a half, almost four, until I was 15 years old. Wow. It, it literally impacted me. I was so traumatized. Man, I got to get you some MDMA or something. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, now, but now I embrace the zombie culture and the zombie lifestyle, and I'm totally good with zombies. What a great story. Yeah. What is the zombie lifestyle exactly? <laughs> it's, it's weird. Like, you know what it is? I thought The Walking Dead was such a cool show when it first started before it jumped the shark. And that's a that's a, a reference to a show called Happy Days for those of you who don't know. Um, Arthur Fonzarelli jumped a shark. To, anyway. Yeah. I dig yeah, it. I bounced off that show after about uh, season, the end of season two. Uh, no, I think it was three, maybe halfway through three. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was the Leatherface people. As soon as the Leatherface people showed up or whatever that was, I was like, all right, I'm done. This yeah, is stupid. Yeah. And so so I really got into The Walking Dead. And then when I named the company Ad Zombies, at right. that point, I had to do something really big to mm -hmm. get the company some, some life and energy. And so I had this really unique opportunity. I was fortunate enough 
that the company launched about a month before Infusionsoft had their their marketing conference here in Phoenix, Arizona, where my company is based. Well, their conference was in downtown Phoenix. And so what I did is I contacted a zombie crew, these actors who basically dress up, put on full makeup. I ordered thousands and thousands of red bags that had Ad Zombies logo printed on it. And we had these zombies walking up and down the streets of Phoenix outside the convention center, distributing bags with our flyers, discount coupons, everything in them so that nobody walked into the conference center without one of our bags. We totally guerrilla marketed. That's awesome. And that's, a, that's so cool. And, and boy, Clayton mask, they were, they were so pissed at me. The guys who owned uh, Infusionsoft, but they that's got over it eventually. Yeah. Yeah, they want yeah, really. Sponsors. They were they were. Pit. I mean, I I could. They want sponsorships. I, I I could, yeah, they exactly. want you to sponsor. Right, right. and their right. sponsors inside had paid a lot of money. Yeah, yep. <laughs> to be a part of the conference, and here I am. I yeah. had twenty five actors roaming the streets of Phoenix That's right around hilarious. the convention. They even tried to have us remove, and but I knew that we were not in violation of any laws because we were not blocking ingress or egress to the convention center. Right, so we were good, and that's right. how it started. <laughs> that's a great story. That's a great starting story. That's a, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. How many clients, do you not have any idea how many clients you got from that? Um, well, that's what started the company. We literally, you know, at that point we would, we had only had maybe $10,000 worth of jobs coming through, you know, like we were a month old. Yeah. And um, right after that, the company just started to go like this. And by the time I had dinner with Gary Vaynerchuk in October, we were already in the couple of hundred thousand dollar range. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, this was growing pretty fast, but I didn't know how to grow this business because I, I'm not an ops guy. I'm a creative guy. Like I, you know, I, I paint in really vivid brush strokes and outside of lines and I'm not a rule follower. And sure. so for me, I didn't know how to grow the business. I just knew how to do what I do really well, which is tell stories and write copy and suppress burps. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're up. You've done really well. So let's okay. Talk. You on a Go side ahead. note, what was it like meeting Gary V? Did you have lunch with him, or it was it just a? Uh, was just so I had, business? I had dinner with Gary in New York. Um, the backstory on this is actually kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I, I didn't realize it was interesting until people told me, "Wow, that's a really cool story." And so <laughs> after I've had enough people tell me that it was a really cool story, I'll share the cool story. <laughs> I was an early Gary V wine library TV follower oh, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Like I was in the early less than a thousand people who knew who the heck he was mm -hmm. subscribers because, yeah. and I wasn't really a wine drinker back then, but I loved the candor, the, right. like just how real he was when he, when he would take a sip of a wine and go, God, this tastes like cat piss. Who would drink this? And like, that's really refreshing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I had context of who Gary was. And so early on, I had emailed him, hey, man, I really like that video on this wine or this wine. And, and so there was some context early on. So over the years, we had occasional sporadic emails. He wasn't the Gary V that we know today. Right. Fast forward. It's September of 2017. And Ad Zombies is really starting to grow. And I'm trying to figure out how to like scale this thing. Back then, all of our email orders or our orders came in via email. They were color coded. So like money had a green color tag on it. Uh, jobs had a yellow. Like it was so bad because I'm not a systems and processes guy. And so I emailed Gary and I said, hey, Gary, next time I'm in New York, can I take you out to dinner and pick your brain? Um, I've got this business that I started and I'm trying to figure some stuff out. And he's like, hey, you know, my schedule is starting to get really booked. He said, starting to get really booked. Like this, again, 2017. Sure. Yeah. And he's like, but I've got a dinner at City Winery. Why don't you, are you, are you able to come to New York and, have, and join me for that? And I said, sure. So I flew to New York and had dinner with him. And, um, and he gave me some great advice at dinner. Like he said, dude, you are a pure creative. He says, I, meaning him, he says, like, I'm an operator. Right. You are a pure creative. You need an operator. You need someone who's built a seven, eight, nine figure company. 
And I was really fortunate to have had time with his team. So they dug into my social profiles. They dug into my business. And he said, you've got several people, five people at least that have built a seven, eight or nine figure scaled company. Why don't you reach out to them, show them what you've done without any operational experience. And someone's going to take you up on becoming a partner. Just give them, you know, 20% equity and you'll have someone who can help you scale this thing. And that's all it took. Wow. And so that was dinner number one. Since then, um, I have seen Gary many times. Uh, he and I have become, um, we're not best friends, but we certainly, yeah. he knows me. I sure. know him. We email right. each other regularly. I've seen him many times. I just had my mastermind in New York City. He spoke at that mastermind because I asked him to. And so, um, which is really cool. So I've developed a really nice relationship with him and he's a great guy. Like yeah. all the people who don't know who he is, He's an amazing entrepreneur for the people who hate him because they think he's just overhyped. He's right. really genuine. He's who he says he is. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. you can tell he loves to, he loves to help, you know, entrepreneurs out there. Yeah, he does. He's got he a little bit of an it. edge. I mean, he's from, he's a New Yorker, right? You so got to. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so he's, yeah. you know, that's what New Yorkers do is how they show up. So, well, Ken, I got to know, like you said, you, you had a first run at kind of the, the ad zombie, um, what you do, mission statement, brand statement, whatever you said, what is it now? And then we'll get so, into like some examples and some theory and that kind of stuff. Okay. So initially the brand statement or the brand positioning was, um, ad zombies brings ads back to life. Okay. And it was like, so like the reanimation part of yeah. the, we leaned into the joke of reanimation. Right. And when I went uh, to Florida uh, a year and a half later, um, I spent five days at Business Mastery with Tony Robbins. And literally, Tony, I don't know how this guy does it. Like, he can run a room for hours and hours and hours and five days in a row. And it was during day one we had this exercise where we – identified what business we're in, what business we're really in, and what business should we be in to future-proof our, our business. And it was in that moment that I really defined who we are as a business. And, you know, we weren't like the best flat fee copywriting service. We weren't bringing ads back to life. No, we're the company that writes words that sell anything. And like, it stuck. And, and what happened was, when the exercise was done, Tony wanted volunteers from the audience. Now, Business Mastery is not like a typical Tony Robbins event. There's not 50,000 people. This is 2,000, 3,000 business owners and maybe some employees of, of the business, right? And Ellen Latham from Orange Theory was there. Uh, I've met Sarah Blakely she and I, from Spanx. She and I are speaking at a conference together this summer, which is super cool. Like really cool little intimate gathering. So Tony goes, hey. I, I need volunteers who wants to share what business they're in, what business they really in, what business they should be in. Da, 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 da. My hand goes up because I'm an extrovert <laughs> and he comes right to me because the energy that comes out of me is like a bomb. And so he comes right to me. He goes, hey, stand up, tell me where you are, who you are, where you're from. But, you know, like, that's my Tony voice. And so I tell him who I am. He says, tell me what business you're in. I said, uh, ad zombies is a copywriting service. We write ads, emails, web copy, da, da, da. Cool. Now, obviously, there's a, a breakthrough, right? And so he asks right. everyone in the audience, who would do business with this company based on what this guy's business is, what Ken's business is? And it was like crickets. And it was really like, How wow, was... holy crap. <laughs> and I, because at this point, these are my people. Like, this is these are business owners. Target-rich yeah. environment. Yes, totally. And so I'm like, uh-oh. So he says, okay, what business are you really in? And I said, Tony, we write words that sell anything. Mm. And then he resurveyed the audience and everyone erupted. And I'm like, and so that defining moment was not only big for me as a, as a business owner, but it became part of the narrative at every business mastery since they talk about that aha with my company. So I, I get stage time at every business mastery, which is really cool. So I got to ask as I yeah. put on my coaching hat, right? Um, do you think that's the words that you said at that moment? Or do you think it's the way you showed up when you said it? I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. You know, 
I, my, I have a very strong belief that the energy you put out into the world mm -hmm. dictates how people perceive you. Absolutely. So if I said, Tony, we write words that sell anything, <laughs> right? That would have a very different reaction than Tony, we write words that sell anything, right? right? It's, it's the intent of the statement, but, yes. and I, I think delivery is everything. And I think mm -hmm. part of, for me, because I came from radio, part of my just wiring is that you have to deliver it with the intention that you wrote it, right? With the way you wrote it, like, cause in your head, when you're writing something, you can actually hear the spoken word if you're, if you live in my broken brain. Right. Well, yeah, it's, it's like the difference between, um, a description of something, which was what your kind of your first answer was, and then a declaration of something, yes, which is much bolder, much more creative, much more infectious. Um, and you know, that's the two ways to use language is descriptive or declarative. The second creates the first one just describes. So, right. so yeah, that's cool. Cause I mean, yeah. just listening. And the reason I question on that is cause just listening to the tagline, if I just read the words, you could say they're also kind of platitudish, right? They're a little <clears throat> like they're, they're not super like amazed, but neither is just do it right out of context. That's right. You know, it's just, so I, I think but it's, it's the emotion behind that, you know, it's the passion right. behind that, yep. you know, what do they but, say? Selling is, is basically, it's, it's a transfer of emotion. Correct. Yeah. And as we move in the discussion here to copy a little bit, um, you know, cause people are, I was talking to a, a young guy who's building a business and he had been copywriting for about three years and he was starting to get burned out because he was so hung up on trying to follow the formulas Ugh. and the, you know, the stuff that everybody's putting out, the templates, you know, yeah. he named some names, but like, dude, those are great. Like you need the overall structure, but yeah, if you don't use your own creativity, cause he said, he's like, I, I was starting to hate and dread copy. I was like, well, that's, that's terrible. Cause it's fun. If you're, yeah. if you understand the framework and, and use your creativity. So Let's hear about yeah. your process and then see some, um, seen some examples that we can share because sure. I know your stuff stopped me in my tracks. Yeah. So, scrolling. so, you know, I think frameworks are interesting and, uh, they're, yes, they're effective, right? There's a, there's thousands of frameworks for copywriting, mm -hmm. but the truth is what I like to do is, is just tell a story and engage people. But my number one job, my number one goal, I shouldn't say not my number one job, my number one goal, whenever I create an ad, if it's for me, if it's for a client. Now, some clients don't like the level of edginess I put into the, into the creative, but I want to entertain my audience first and foremost, because if I entertain them, I win because they're never going to forget me. Right. And so I don't necessarily follow any of the frameworks. I kind of dive into my own little world of um, brain damage and I, I, I write about the things that, that make me chuckle. And I have like a, I don't know about you guys, but I have like a running list of weird things that I think about, which later on get implemented somehow into an ad. And some of them are really dark. Like some of them are like, holy crap. But I've found opportunities to use them. I had one yesterday that I'm like, I, I have it stashed away. I'm going to use it at some point. And, you know, and I'm okay <laughs> if it offends somebody. It's but okay. they break, it breaks people out of their coma, so to speak. A hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. That's what you want to do. You yep. got to be, you got to do something to break them out of that coma. Yeah. So let's, um, let's talk about some of your examples, some of your winners, and that'll help people kind of hear or listeners hear and viewers see. Okay. Kind of what you do and then we'll then we'll try to reverse engineer and see what you're doing all right so i'm gonna do uh i gotta open system preferences because i didn't do it beforehand sorry see this, right. this is what happens when you do it live right we'll do it live Good stuff what was that movie <laughs> i don't know we'll do it live we'll do it live yeah. yeah that that rings a bell what was that from oh no it wasn't a movie it was um oh god what was the guy he used to be on fox riley O'Reilly. Oh, Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, Bill that we'll do live. <laughs> I can't do this because I got a quick. Google I remember that clip. Quick. That's that's hilarious. Yeah, we'll yeah, do he it got live. Really pissed, didn't he? Yeah. You can drop oh, me yeah. a link. Sure. You can drop me a link in the chat, and I can pull it I, up. I think I got it. I think I got it. Hold on. Let me see if it'll work. Oh god. 
Yeah, no, 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 hold on. No, we're getting there. Any day now. There we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So this ad, tell me if you see it. Uh, let's see. I might have to add it. All right. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So the inspiration for this ad, by the way, a lot of people are offended by it. That's Ooh, okay. Yeah. And and we get, but we get a lot of uh, a lot of reactions on our ads. You know, this so one. Describe actually, for our listeners that aren't watching video. Okay. Go ahead and describe what you're what we're looking so, at. What I did is I wanted to take an uh, an image of a Mormon missionary holding a Book of Mormon, and I had my art people turn it into the Book of Zombie, and it's another testament of Jesus the copywriter. And um, and then I was inspired by a Timberland Boots ad, and okay. the Timberland Boots ad had uh, Timberland Boots, and it had something about the wording was just really inspirational that and it was so so this ad followed kind of the formatics of that timberland boots ad and i wrote a whole blog about this and finding creative inspiration all around us so the the picture is of a of a man in a suit you don't see the man you see his hand down in the right hand corner you see the book of zombie and with the little text beneath it that by the way only like five people have ever commented that they saw that and they were like that's brilliant yeah. Um, another testament of Jesus, the copywriter. And then it says, we write copy that converts. The next line says, maybe we should become missionaries. And then, so that's, that's in the actual ad itself. And by the way, I used zero text in that Facebook ad. If you look um, the, where the body of the ad would normally be, there's no text because I put it all in the graphic. Oh wow! And, yeah. then, and then the headline of the ad just says, a gift from heaven? Hell yeah. That's it. <laughs> And so a I mean, juxtaposition there. Yes, no yeah. doubt. Like, yeah, absolutely. And, and so that ad has like, you know, only 407 reactions, which bothers me. Um, I, I do, even though Gary says, don't pay attention to that stuff. I do. Sure. And, but it's got 180 comments and has been shared 19 times. So that ad by itself is, is pretty cool. Then. I'll I mean, the fact another, that people are sharing your ads period is. Yes. It, it's cool. cool. It is. I, I kind of get, I, I enjoy that. It's fun for me. Now, then there is, uh, let's go to another one. Uh, I don't know if it's going to let me share it like this. Do I have to change what I'm sharing? I do. Okay. Probably, yeah. So I'm going to stop the share and then I'm going to do another share. Oh, this is so cool. I've never used it like this. This is super cool. Thanks for letting me do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So the next one, I took an iconic Campbell's soup ad and I turned it into zombie gut bullion. Oh, I've seen, yeah, I've seen this ad in Ogilvy on advertising. I yeah. Think. So that was the inspiration for that okay. was the, the, the bullion so, ad, right? Where it's pouring into the glass. So I yeah, had yeah. my, my art team turn this into zombie get bullion. Remember when, when you see something that's inspiring, that inspires you creatively, use it to your advantage. Don't like, you're not copying. You're not like, it's an, it's an inspiration for what you do. Right. And so the the picture is of a it, it looks like a Campbell's soup can being poured by a woman's hand. Again, I'm being a visual here, a yeah. visual explainer for the for the listeners. And the can label says zombie gut bullion. <laughs> and so it looks like a real Campbell's soup can. And if you look at the glass that it's being poured into, it's this green liquid. Yes. But if you look at the glass closely and you have to really examine this, there are bones, guts, all sorts of things, body parts in the glass. That's and cool. so that was part of it. And then, so the headline of the ad says the secret to writing great ads, let ad zombies do them. And then the copy again, in this one, I didn't use any body copy in the ad because it's all in the visual. That's something that I like to do to disrupt the advertising pattern is mm -hmm. to not have copy when possible. I like to put it in the ad. And so, so you're, so, about, you're almost like a old school space ad guy then. Oh, a hundred percent. Very it, Ogilvy ish. Yep. It, and Clearly. and Ogilvy has inspired me. And I have read, it, first of all, if you saw what was on my floor, I can go get it. Like I have stacks of books that I'm, I've read for years and I still read them because it's yeah. my craft. It's what I'm passionate about. As sure. you can see, my energy level changes when I talk about advertising. And yeah. so um, the, the copy in the ad says, pouring our guts into your ads. Now, again, it references what's in the glass. So there's a lot of subtlety in my ads. And then um, it says every serving of ad zombies copy is packed with all the advertising power your marketing needs. 
Um, we painstakingly pour our guts into every drop of fresh ads, emails, web copy, and scripts we write. And so that is like how I do it. And, and well, so, then, go ahead. You left off the final line, which was mm -mm, mm -mm, good, mm -mm, advertising, good advertising, which is a spinoff of uh, Campbell's. Yes, it's, a, it's an absolute homage to Campbell's Soup. Now, the last ad that I'm going to share is the one that I get the most heat for. And so that's why I'm going to share this one. All right. And so in the, in the uh, inspired by Ogilvy genre of ads, I wrote an ad that talked about inspiration. And the inspiration that I thought was brilliant in terms of, you know, of course, sometimes like I'll have an idea and I go, oh, that's a great idea. And, and I don't vet my ideas with anybody on my team. I just do stuff. Like I come up with an idea and then I execute the idea. That's just how I work. And so this one, um, when you see the social sharing on this, you'll understand why. Uh, this ad really, I don't know if it offends people or inspires people or I don't know where people are at with this, but maybe they just don't read the ad. They just kind of react to it. And okay. so- um, where is it? <laughs> You're seeing King Kong with a <laughs> Fay Ray. Let's see if I can reload that for you. Give me a moment here. Da, da, da. After all that build up, you better be able to find it. I know this is terrible. <laughs> like I feel like I'm losing right now. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this camera and stop sharing the screen. I'm going to reload it while there we go. Got it to reload. See, all I had to do was, was walk away from it. Yeah, uh, detachment yeah, pretty much that's all it was all right so now let me get in here okay that's the mormon ad uh there we go dr king so before i even dive into what this ad says i want to dive into the social proof because if you're a small business owner a marketer an agency you own a mom and pop pizza shop you want ads that cause reactions I don't care if I offend people. I don't care if I bother people. I don't care if I make them uncomfortable. I don't care if they don't like me. What I care is they stop when my ads hit their feed and they're like, whoa, what is this? So the social proof on this ad is very typical of my higher performing ads. And that is this ad has had over 8,000 reactions globally over 390 comments and has been shared 1.4 thousand times. Wow. Okay. Now these are people reacting to an ad. So mm -hmm. I want to just kind of drill that into your head. Most people skip ads altogether. My ads, they don't skip, they talk about. And so if you as a business owner are listening to this and, and I really like, I cannot emphasize this enough. And this is not about me selling what I do. This is about me helping business owners like really grow their business. You have to disrupt the pattern. You have to break through the noise. And there's so much noise on every channel today that if you don't do stuff like this, you're invisible. Right. right. And so <clears throat> the ad headline, which is below the image, says inspire, move, impact. That's all it says. It's not even a really call to action based ad. Right. right. And so the the ad itself looks like an old newspaper column and it shows a picture of dr king you know during his famous i had a dream speech i have a dream that one day right you know everybody knows that speech standing at the at the mall in our nation's capital and there he is i mean it's it's a great photo of him just kind of waving to the crowd and the big banner text ad along the top says inspired this is all part of the graphic and this is what gets people pissed at me. I wrote, Dr. King was a wordsmith. His message inspired millions. His words created movement. His impact, palpable. King's message changed the world. It inspires, moves, and impacts the human race. That's in the left column. Mm -hmm. Then in the right column, I take, I'm, I'm on to the next topic. Shouldn't your advertising do the same? Let us write your message, inspire your audience, create movement, and impact your bottom line. The, the amount of hate 
<laughs> and then the amount of comments that are like, he was a Republican, he was a Democrat, he was a socialist, he was a communist. Why doesn't, um, yeah, I see the first comment. Why doesn't he say he was a Democrat socialist? I mean, <laughs> oh literally, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Totally uh, missed we, the point. Yeah, you totally missed the point. And some people are like, wait a second, you're comparing your copywriting business to Dr. King? No, yeah. Yeah. no, if you, re if you know how to read, <laughs> I didn't compare what we do. What I said was he was a wordsmith. His yeah. message inspired, his words created movement, his impact was palpable. And all I said was, yeah. shouldn't your advertising do the same? See, so people make the bridge themselves, even though I didn't say it. And that's okay. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. They made that connection. And so when I do ads like this, yes, uh, it causes a stir and people do get that's upset. What you want. Absolutely. No, and, yeah, yeah, because there's, there's a couple of things that I noticed unique. I love the... The, the, you know, the headline inspire in bold font at the very top, but then, you know, the classic, the black and white with the two columns. Um, yeah, that totally breaks up, you know, the pattern is it's pattern interruption because we see ads all the time. That's completely different than what you normally see. Right. And, and so for me, it's all about breaking through. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, there's an ad that I have that's really just promoting a blog that I wrote. And it says, I like offending people. And <laughs> the background of, of the visual, it's a blue background. And it's got these white pills lined up to look like the lower half of a male torso. And there's a, uh, let's just call it a flaccid penis shaped out of pills in the, in the visual. And so immediately, like that creates just a stir because people are like, wow, what the hell is this? Yeah. You know, my blog, when I wrote after I came back from Holland, the, the title of that blog, I turned into an ad, drinking beer and window shopping for prostitutes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> right? It, Perfect. It, it, it really disrupts the pattern. And then yeah. my wife, by the way, had friends calling her. Did you see what your husband wrote? Like, he was window shopping for prostitutes. No, you don't understand what he does for a living. <laughs> I mean, that's what do you think it is? Because you're obviously drawn to it. I'm drawn to it. They were obviously successful back in the day. The, that Ogilvy style Ooh. ad where it's like 20% of the real estate across the top is a headline. Then like, you know, a good 40% is this really simple but powerful image. And then that bottom third is like copy. Right. Have you ever like, I mean, something about those just continues to stand out and work. And then looking at your, you know, your Inspire ad. Any ideas like just yeah and shop what what's going on there yeah so i i think a couple of things i i think marketers as a whole today don't have a lot of creativity nor do they have a lot of comfort doing things that feel and i'm going to air quote the crap out of this old Got and it. that's a really old style of doing an ad right that's more like a newspaper style or a newspaper column ad right and what i like about that is because it is so old so out of the current modern advertising space that it's totally new. Like when people see it, they're like, right. what is this? Like, yeah. you know, I, I made a reference yesterday in a conversation uh, we were talking about, I was having some Thai food and there was this big hunk of ginger that was like, it just got, you know, must've fallen in when they were cutting it. It just wasn't sliced really thin. And I'm like, Ooh, ginger. I totally prefer Marianne. And <laughs> Right. That reference is so old that that two of the people sitting at the table with us were like, what, what do you mean? What? And so I, I made a quick Facebook reel just to see if people understood the context. Yeah. And so I think something that's that old, that's that like out of style, because really that style went out in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's it's disruptive because it's different. And so I am always looking for things that disrupt the pattern. I'm always looking for things that just grab attention. And if, if it's going back to an old school inspiration like that, I'm good with it. And there are going to be times when I'm going to do something that's like totally eighties, long hair, weird, multicolored, because all this stuff comes back, mm -hmm. you know, it's everything well, comes and back in style. And also, if it's your avatar, we've talked about this on the show. If your avatar is, you know, grew up in the 80s and 90s or 70s or whatever, then they instantly recognize some of this stuff. Like yeah. there's a there's a nostalgia that kicks yeah. in that is just, you know, you can't like nobody. It, 
nostalgia is like kryptonite for any you know buyer like they just it, they're powerless against 100 percent nostalgia it's it's like you know how even though most people don't like some certain thing about a thanksgiving meal mm -hmm. the moment you walk into a home that has been roasting a turkey and mm -hmm. doing you you it just transports you to a place mm -hmm. it takes you somewhere and i believe that advertising effective advertising should take you somewhere you should have an emotional visceral reaction to it and so for me, my goal is to always do that. That's, yeah. you know, I, I wish I could do that for all of our clients because a lot of our clients will go, I want, I want him to write for us. I can't do that. But um, it's, it's just to create that emotional impact is so huge. So it sounds like you have quite a few clients. You're doing well for yourself, for the agency. So I assume you have junior writers. Yes, we have a team. So how, of do you, how do you train them? to be creative and to come up with this kind of stuff. So we don't actually hire copywriters. Okay. We, we bring on storytellers. Wow. That's good stuff. And that's so really important. Yeah. Because you can teach anyone the, the mechanics of writing copy. Yeah. It's very hard to transport someone who's an introvert, who's not good at telling stories mm -hmm. to become a really effective storyteller. So who's, what does a story tell, teller look yeah, what is, like? What, is do that you, in, what does that indie job posting look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who are um, these Who are these storytellers? Where, what is their background? So a storyteller came from uh, outside of the normal industries. They're not okay. in the advertising space. They might be like we have one, one writer on our team that's written children's storybooks. Hmm. Like they they're just so diverse and from different places. We have had some people who've come from MLMs, but they hated their jobs because sure. they wanted to do things that were more fun and exciting and like made a difference and not just selling some weird weight loss pill. Yeah. Well, um, pastors, do you have any pastors? Cause I, I found pastors do pretty well with copy because they're used to that framework of a story and getting people to a point. I don't think we do, but okay. So, and and I will say this, we have more women writers, more women yeah. storytellers than we do men. And sure. I think women are inherently better at storytelling than men are. I think men are good drunk storytellers. They're terrible <laughs> natural storytellers for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. The, uh, yeah. The fishing trips and the yeah. uh, hunting trips and all Dude, those things. She, she, did you see her? She was <laughs> make, making eyes at me. She was, she wanted me. Like I'm telling you, like I could like that, right? It, yeah, those are good. <laughs> Sorry. We know what kind of stories you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, you're, I think you're absolutely right. Females are inherently better at writing stories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and they they they're probably they tend to be the majority of fiction writers mm -hmm. that you see like on Amazon and, you know, I'm not into, I don't read a lot of fiction, but I'm, I'm assuming that they're probably the majority of fiction writers today. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were. And, you know, for me, I think that they are just, just like I prefer female doctors. Yeah. I prefer female copywriters, storytellers on my team. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the same for salespeople as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There, there's just some, there's a level of empathy and emotional connection that mm -hmm. I don't know if men, I think men have it. I just think they suppress it and ignore it because it's yeah. not cool to do that. That's right. right. So you find these storytellers wherever you find them, storytellers.com or wherever you find them. And then uh, <laughs> how do you bring them into the world of advertising? Because you, you have sure. to obviously make a switch to where they know they're selling something right. without so, killing their creativity. Yeah. Right. So we have, we have internal training that we've created and developed and like Stella on my team is, is one of the people who make sure all of our writers are up to speed on the current stuff when it comes to platforms. But really it's the client brief that dictates what we write, right? So mm -hmm. if, are we writing a direct response ad? Teaching direct response is easy when you're a storyteller, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because storytelling is a very natural thing for direct response. And most of the typical frameworks rely on good storytelling. And so it's, it's very Especially easy. Especially the cold traffic ones. Yeah. Like if you're going to be on the cold traffic side. 100%. If you're on 100%. the offer side, direct side, 
you don't need that as much. Correct. Right. Because then it's just like, you know, value, benefit, like all the features, benefits and value and, and call to action. Right. This is different. So mm -hmm. I think that um, our training is, is pretty thorough, but it really gets them platform ready for all the different platform things that we need to do for clients. You know, whether email is different than, than Facebook versus Instagram versus Google. I mean, Google ads are my least favorite, by the way. I, I look, it's a box, you know, right? Google, right. They, they, there's no creativity in a Google ad. Right. It's when was the last small box? Right. right. When was the last day you saw a Google ad that went, wow, I've got a new business with that company. That is the most creative blue link I've ever seen. Yeah. Plus, I mean, their algorithm, their platform can spin the article, the ad for you in so many different ways. Like you yeah. just put in the basics and let it do its thing. Like you don't really sure. need, and there's no image to play with. Like, yeah, it's pretty boring. Yeah. Um, what about YouTube ads? I assume you do. Yeah, we do. We do some YouTube ads. Uh, most of the clients that are that are doing YouTube ads provide the video, and we're writing the headline and description, the things okay. that are going to help that video move and rank. And because at the end of the day, we're not the content producer, right? We don't mm -hmm. do. We don't sit there and do your VSL, your video sales letter. We don't right. sit there and create your your content if you're Mr. Beast. Um, but we're certainly going to write a description that grabs attention. We're going to certainly write the, uh, the headline of the, of the video. And we're yeah. going to make sure that we've got keywords that make sense. But at the end of the day, we're focused on the one thing that is, we think the most important thing after the visual, and that is the written word. Okay. Are you, so with the some of the restrictions that Facebook and you know all of these platforms have I mean I think it, I mean it seems like from from my perspective hearing you talk I mean it's pretty easy to bypass cuz you're not you know your ads are a little bit different than you know you're not promising yeah, what's the most risque kind of on the line <laughs> you like CBD um yeah so so feminine health you know stuff right. I always tell clients we can write ads for anything except for weed and sex toys. If you smoke <laughs> it or poke it, we can't touch it. <laughs> and, but the reality That's is, great. is that we or can firearms, write firearms, I guess in this case. Yeah. Firearms on Facebook. Like they don't, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a no go. But um, yeah, there, there are only a few like very small, narrow segments that we can't touch. And yeah. even in the ones that we can touch, occasionally you're going to run into some friction with the platform. Like we have an ad that I tried my darndest to get through and mm -hmm. Facebook just would not block it because their algorithm was too stupid to realize that we're not selling sex toys. I created an ad about this really smarmy character and the visual of him. He just looks like the greasiest, grossest used car salesman of like the 1970s that you can imagine. Yep. <laughs> and almost like a little Ron Jeremy. -ish. And, um, and if you don't know who that is, just Google it, but don't make sure you're doing a safe search, please, please. Incognito. Incognito, no kids in the room. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy. You duck, duck, go. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, so, so the, uh, wow. Yeah. I just like put a visual <laughs> left in my head. So the ad that I created was, or, and I used the name Jeremy because I was Ron. That was the inspiration. Jeremy, the used sex toy salesman. <laughs> and Jeremy, how he was trying to sell on Facebook. And so I wrote this really amazing, fun story and rejection, rejection, rejection. And ah, it killed me because that ad, when I, when it was live, like it got, it was live for a few days and got a ton of instant reaction. And I'm like, Ooh, this ad's going to be fire. And then Facebook was like, no soup for you. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I, I tried making slight edits and changes, but the, yeah. the reality is I could not navigate their algorithm to where, yeah. like, I didn't want to remove the words, use sex toy salesman from the ad. Yeah. Yeah, it, would so have, that... it would have decreased the effect, effectiveness of the ad. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. It would have made wow. the ad impotent. That's yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, all right. So changing gears, we're right at an hour. Okay. Uh, I want to be cautious of your time. We're good, but I want to make sure you're good. <laughs> But I noticed in the last few days, you've got a new ad running about AI, which we've been talking about a lot on the yes. show. Yes. So I would love to hear your in your your take on AI. And I, I kind of know from the ad, you know, <laughs> that you're a fan, but I'd like to hear how you 
how you've come to terms with AI and kind of where you're at on it right now. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to bring Gary V back into this conversation. Okay. Gary V and I had a very thoughtful conversation about this a couple of weeks ago because we saw uh, a really interesting thing occur in my company. And that is January, February, we had some clients depart and these clients were not our agency clients, but these were like the small, like mom and pop businesses. Who were, well, Hey, I can, I'm going to use AI because I can do it for free. I don't have to pay you guys. And they're not our ideal client necessarily because the agencies that we have relationships with, the big agencies, the Vayners, right? The BBDOs, like all those agencies, those are the clients that use us at scale. Okay. They understand the value of human copywriting and storytelling. What's really cool for me is understanding that you can train AI to speak in your brand voice. And so that's what I've been really dialed into is helping <clears throat> train AI because the reality is, is that most clients who decide to try AI or most people in general that decide to try AI to do their copy, they're going to get a pretty okay copy. Okay. It's the engineering of the prompt, what you put in that matters. Yeah. Like I can tell you that before I got on this today, I was talking to some of my team members about some of the things that I've been able to accomplish with AI over the last few days. And I said, look at this. And they read some things and they're like, oh, that you wrote that, that's fire. And I'm like, I didn't write that, <laughs> right? I could teach AI to sound like me. Like, mm. that's cool. Give and us so an example of, of a prompt that would, that you would allow AI to write in your own voice. So a prompt that I would allow AI to write in my own voice. I had AI after I trained it. So understand that there's a lot of, I've put hours of feeding things in so that yeah. it understood the brand voice right. and, um, and understood my snarcasm, which is a word that I use all the time for my brand. And <laughs> so um, it takes time. That's yeah, the first thing. Absolutely. Like, this is not like you just say, you, you know, you change one prompt. Yeah, no, you know, it, no. it learns over time. Correct. And it gets better the more you right. give it thoughtful input. Right. And mm -hmm. so I had it write five headlines. Are yeah. you actually using chat GPT or something else? Like GPT-3 and now we're on GPT-4. We're in that right. early beta okay. group. Um, mm -hmm. And so I had to write five headlines for my company using uh, features and benefits. And yeah. then I did one where it, it wrote five ad copies where it not only did features and benefits, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's using my voice. And man, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, it's scary good. But yeah. the thing is, is that if you look, I've tracked the hours that I've put into training the AI, that's where companies and people need to understand the value of that. Like that's where my team is really good. So we're starting to work right now on an AI offering that allows a little bit of that hybridization, that human AI mix. Yeah. And so that we're going to have, you can, yeah, we can generate the AI copy for you, but our humans are going to, are going to help the prompt, put the prompt in so that we can take what you give us and put it into something that makes sense for the AI. Sure. And it's out something relatively good that then our editors can, can massage and tweak so that you get something that's going to work out of the box. Yeah. I, I think the ad I saw says train your AI like a puppy. Yes which is a great analogy. Like it's not instant. It takes a little time commitment right. um, to keep the puppy from peeing on the rug. Right. A hundred percent. hundred percent. You got to do that. Yeah. What's the time frame? What, I mean, what would you tell people? I mean, what is typically uh, a realistic time frame once you start, you know, chat GBT mm -hmm. uh, prompting, right. Or it's a kind of learn, start to learn your voice and how you want things written. So it depends on the business, right? Like my right. brand has a really weird voice, so it takes a lot of time. But if you're like a funeral home, it's pretty basic, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I don't see a lot of funeral homes doing ads, but, um, <laughs> you know, there are, well, there are a couple and like, there was one that we did ads for and they did celebration of life parties. Mm -hmm. And so we did a whole campaign where we put the fun F U N in funerals. And so again, AI is not going to be able to do that. Right. That's no. where there, that's where there's a disconnect from AI. Um, so right now it's three to five days turnaround with a human, right? Once we get the prompt engineering up to scale for like, as clients come in and say, Hey, we want you to do an ad for this. 
Right. Uh, we're going to be down to probably a few hours. Yeah. And that's the speed, like the efficiency goes up dramatically. But I still have the team working on it so that we're getting sure we're not getting crap copy on the output. So, yeah, yeah we're hoping to launch that in the next uh, 30 to 60 days at the latest. Uh, 15 days is ideal. Um, yesterday would be even better. Yeah. yeah. You already have a course, though, available, right? I do. So what happened was I sat down. I'm like, if I can if I can help show people how to engineer their own prompts, I'm going to do this. So I literally just sat there, did a video, recorded it. And then I also deliver uh, a second thing, which shows I have like 500 prompts that I've done just for getting better output. Because I think if I can help the world use AI more effectively to get what they need for their business, then it's a win. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Where can people, uh, is that on your website? The uh... Yeah. So you can go to uh, adzombies.com or if you want to go right to where the courses are, it's learn.adzombies.com. Okay. And in there, you'll see, I think there's at least one of the AI things there, but there'll also be an opportunity to grab the other one in there. So, okay. oh, look, see, there's the AI prompts. So those are the prompts, over 500 prompts. And then um, <clears throat> when you when you click that, I think there's a, an option to get the the three video training thing that I did as well. Oh, man. So, there you go. My credit card's about to be pulled out after this episode. <laughs> I cheers you for that. <laughs> <laughs> love yeah, it that, yeah, it looks good um yeah that's a it's, it's turned into quite a business isn't it prompting prompt engineering and selling prompts and yeah that kind I of had, stuff i had a client come to me the other day that's not one of our regular ad zombies clients and and he, they have a pretty heavy lift and they said hey i we need your help and so we're um we're talking right now about doing prompt engineering for them and but they want me and my creativity to be the driver of the prompt engineering so um, which is, which is awesome. I, unfortunately I'm not scalable, so <laughs> I can't do that all the time, but for, for select clients and select requests and clients who say, listen, we're going to pay what just you, what it, you'd name the price. We just need you to do it. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I'm happy to do it. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited to, to take a sneak peek at that course as well. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to like let the people know, Ken, before we before we wrap up, Jonathan, well, and then if you got any questions, you know, go go ahead. Start with questions, and then I'll I'll give you my closing thoughts. Okay. No, I mean I'm I'm jotting down the uh, the the links on the on the courses right away because that's where I'm going to be right after this episode. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah, and you know, I'm gonna I'm go in. You know, Ken, I'm in the more of a industrial sector. Mm -hmm. So I work with a lot of, um, you know, more or less manufacturing customers in my industry. And I do, I do some marketing work. I do some sales work with them, but I tell, you know, Sean and I talk about this all the time. You know, I'm in our trade journals all the time and our trade journals suck. You know, in terms of, you know, you go through the ads and you see some of the stuff that they put out compared to what they could be doing. Uh, it's, it's just amazing, you know, that there's so many opportunities out there, you know, when, I, when we hear, when we talk about, when we discuss, you know, some of the, you know, Ogilvy S type, you know, ads that people are missing out on that they could go, that they could use that are a hundred percent, you know, break you out of your coma. Yeah. I mean, they're disruptive though. I mean, pattern interruption right there i mean it's it's crazy but they're doing the same thing you know it's like i feel through i tell sean all the time you know i get through i get our quarterly journals all the time our trade journals and you flip through and the ads are just so boring and and you know yeah. these companies are spending a fortune you know well not a fortune but they're spending you know tens of thousands of dollars yeah. in full page ads for lousy advertising on a regular basis. It's just, it blows my mind. You know, you just gave me a new market to go after. Thank you for that. I yeah, will... I know, I know. There you go. I mean, but, it's but just it's so interesting because th there are so many people in so many different industries and trade journals that like just don't get it. And oh, they're, they're horrible. Yeah. They're horrible. And they're spending a fortune. Yes, I, you know, are. I question people like this all the time because, you know, I do, you know, I have a couple of podcasts in these niche industry uh, industrial sectors. And I'm like, you guys are, are crazy to, you know, spend the kind of money that you're spending on full page ads on a journal that runs quarterly. Yeah. 
and and the kind of like the kind of copy that you're writing is just horrible. I mean, yeah, you know, what a waste of money. Yeah. But, so, you know, it's funny. One of the things that I like to do occasionally, and I'll do weird things like this. And I'll, in fact, now that we're talking about it, I'm going to do this. This is going to be one of the next ads I'm going to release. <laughs> I will do intentionally an entire ad upside yeah. down that looks like it was accidental. That's perfect. And I've even done ads where I go, um, insert headline here. <laughs> and, and then people are, people will comment, you totally blew it. You're a marketing company. Da, da, da. But if you read the body copy, it's, it says, you know, if they're reading the copy, I said, well, if you're reading this, then I guess what we did just worked. Right. So it like yeah. grabs people's attention. I love right. those pattern interrupts and same thing for, for, for written stuff. Now this is, this is, and this is going to be my closing thought. And I just, I want to share this with anyone who is a business owner and in an industry where there's trade publications, whatever. Don't, when you're sitting down to come up with an idea for your campaign, for an ad, for an industry trade, whatever. Right. Don't go sit in your office. Go to some place that's creative. Go to yeah. some place that inspires you. And, and really just relax, clear your mind, and try not to think of all the things that we have to do in life to, yeah. before you start writing. I coach people when I start the writing process, typically I will sit with a glass of bourbon. My lights are <laughs> never this bright unless I'm, unless I'm doing like a podcast or on camera stuff. I will sit and do like my room is quiet. I don't even have music on. I've just got my little hotel collection scent thing back there. That makes my office smell really pretty. Um, yeah, it's kind of Metro. I know. Don't judge. Uh, <laughs> But but it's really what's your bourbon of choice? I have to ask. You know it varies, but like I, lately I'm into Buffalo Trace. I like Buffalo it's Trace yeah, quite a bit. I like it, and uh, it's it's been out in a couple of locations. So that's mm -hmm. one of them. I've got like a a, a short list, but um, but I'll sit with my bourbon, not necessarily to drink, but because I need that <clears throat> that thing in my hand. And mm -hmm. so like I'll swirl it around. I hear the glass, the ice clinking against the glass. It kind of puts me in the right mindset. And yeah. then I start writing and I don't write by having all of my screens and computers on. I do two things. I'm either writing in my remarkable, um, which is just oh, a yeah. digital. A we digital both have one of those. Yeah. yeah that's good stuff. Um, so I either write in that because it's like paper, but it's electronic. And so yes. I have a PDF output when I'm done mm -hmm. or I use an app called Otter AI and mm -hmm. I voice dictate the entire thing and it transcribes it for me. And that to me is one of the most efficient ways of writing. So get out of your normal environment and, <laughs> and do something that inspires you before you write. That's good stuff. And there you have it. Now, so what are some other, oh, I'm curious, cause you're a fan of, um, you know, the, some of the, uh, some of the zombie shows, right. Um, what are some other shows that have inspired you? And in, in terms of creativity for writing, there are, are or movies. You can you, say shows yeah. or movies. It's I love pop culture. Anything so Breaking yeah. Bad was good when it was right, right, you know yeah. new and and so like mm -hmm. I'm really into pop culture. So anytime there's something new, some reference, some hit thing, I'm yeah, just yeah. all over it because those pop culture references connect people like like that. Yes, and you know you know. So earlier I had mentioned that, and I just got to notice that my two o'clock people are ever waiting for me in the lobby. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, they, they're like, Hey, we're here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yesterday I said that I had this dark thought, right? And I'm going to share the dark thought and I'm okay with being judged, <laughs> but I, 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 I want to share this because not because I want to tell people how weird I am or how dark my thoughts are, but yeah. to understand that creative inspiration comes from all sorts of things, including pop culture. And so yesterday, someone said something to me that was really like, oh, um, this is terrible, you know, it just it, not inspiring, whatever. And, and it was a really dark thought. And so I said, and of course, I wrote it down without even thinking. And then after I said it, I wrote it down. <laughs> it's worse than getting in a helicopter with Kobe Bryant on a cloudy day. <laughs> dark. Very dark. dark. Yeah. But guess what? Yeah. I'm going to find Ooh, a way or a use for that. And it's going to get a lot of backlash. Oh yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yep. Yep. 
Oh. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's the thing. Being okay with it. You got to no, be okay with it. Yeah. yeah. That's good stuff. I know you get a client waiting. Um, we'll have to do. have you on again sometime. I'd love to be on again, and I'll try a different beer. Okay. And uh, yeah, learn.adzombies.com if you want to get uh, schooled on how to write like Ken Spanky Moskowitz. I, I see a flag in your background, Ken. Is that Folds of Honor? Is that, that, is, that is my grandfather's flag. He was a World War II veteran. In fact, I have a wonderful blog about him on yeah. the Zombies website. Um, he was my entrepreneurial awesome. inspiration. Okay. And uh, when Grandpa died, I was uh, honored to have his flag. So Grandpa goes with me, and he's in my office. And in fact, if you look right over my smart board, that, that print on the wall is a print that hung over the desk in his office in Queens, New York, when I was a little oh, boy. Oh, wow. And That's awesome. it has been reframed to be in my office as well. That's cool. That is so, cool. Yeah. yeah. Man, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a fun. We, we definitely got to have you back on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yep. yep. All right. We'll All right, let you go you to your client, client and uh, we'll wrap up. Thanks Thank again, you, Ken. Ken. Thank you. Hey, take care, man. Have a great weekend. You as well. And happy birthday, Sean. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care. That's good stuff, man. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Man, that was great. Fantastic yeah. guest. Where you go, yeah. Sean? Yeah, he uh got the radio voice too. He does, man. man just had He's, a nice soothing voice. That's right. Well, Funny. he's got a background in radio. Yeah. You know, so like he told us. Yeah, that um yeah, you might want to look around. I, I, I thought the ad was selling this for like ninety seven, so you might want to look around. Don't tell anybody I told you that, but <laughs> well, go visit the site. You'll get pixeled and then there's it. It'll show up. Maybe there's a discount code. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't we'll, know. <laughs> we'll have to ask, see if we can share it. Too. Um, those AI prompts though. I'm definitely jumping on that. Yeah. Cause that's, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of those courses coming out for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny. Well, like know, now, prompt we, we engineering about is Justin like, Brooke. Yeah, yeah. Ju I mean, Justin Brooke in the past and or recently, but I'm I'm gonna go through this and since we just had him on and uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm excited to try some of this stuff as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's not going to waste. So you might as well learn how to use it. But I, I you love might that as he's well just. Adopt it. Yeah, I love how edgy and how how he's okay with getting <laughs> such negative comments on his ads. Absolutely. Um, you know, because some people would be like, hey, that doesn't hurt your brand because it's negative comments around your brand. Right. Um, he just doesn't, doesn't care. Yeah. So if you're a small business owner out there, you have to embrace this. I mean, you know, the same being the same sucks. You know, yeah. you do not want to be the same as everyone else. Yep. Uh, just like I said in, in the trade journals, everybody looks the same. Mm -hmm. When you're the same, you might as well be completely obsolete. No one sees you. Yeah, it's invisible. Right. So take some lessons and uh, check out. We'll post a link on the, um, uh, what's that learn? Was it learn dot? Learn dot adzombies.com. Okay. Very good. So you can see the courses. He's got the zombie AI prompts for better AI output. You know, if you're doing your own ads, this would be a great place to start. Five essential storytelling styles for Facebook ads. You know, yeah. if you want to improve your Facebook ads and then, you know, words that sell anything. Yeah. Bold, persuasive so, copy. So, yeah, those yeah, all three look good. good. Yeah. Might have to message and see if he'll give me a discount. Yeah. Pack. <laughs> so. What's the, yeah, exactly. What's the, uh, give us a uh, bulk discount. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Runaway Train says, damn, I'm late. Um, yeah, you are. We just, we're wrapping up. But yeah, watch the beginning. This was a good one with Ad Zombies. Those guys are amazing. So yeah, definitely check that out. Yes. So, there's some uh, samples on the video, which I know Runaway Train, you're watching on YouTube. So we appreciate yep. you. Yep, absolutely. All right, Sean, Sean I mentioned earlier, happy birthday. You are, you. Uh, today is your... Uh, I won't say it was a 50 something 50, 52nd. I'm fine with it. 52nd. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I got the big five Oh coming up Sunday. So I'm right there with you. I know. Yeah. Just I'm a right young behind. kid. You're now in a, you're now in the, the over 50 sports, you know, masters I know, group. I know. 
you know what? I'm looking forward. I've told everyone, including my wife, um, you know, all of my family, I'm looking, I'm embracing the fifties. Like that's the, to me, that's, you know, I, I, I'm inspired by, you know, other people, historical figures and business owners out there that, you know, typically your fifties are one of your most productive times throughout your yeah. entire career. So that's true. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's been good so far. Yeah. Two years in, like I said, you're, you're now at the top of your, you're at the, that's right. You're the best of your age class, right? Cause you, you still got the most energy of your forties, but you're just barely 50. That's right. So yeah, it's a good exactly. time to compete in age bracket races and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. When you turn into the 50. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't wait. I can't wait to start competing with people on my age being a, a, a youngster in the fifties. Right. Yeah. Cause that 40 to 49 bracket. <laughs> If you're doing like age related races and stuff, right. That's a tough bracket. If, that's a as tough you get one. older. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm excited about competing with my, my counterparts in the fifties for yes. sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks for listening. As always, you can find us over at persuasion by the pint.com episode three Oh two. And, uh, I tell you, Sean, we got some great guests coming up. I mean, this has been, great today we've got um uh we've got i think we got guests coming up next week too right we got a um a young copywriter coming up next week uh kind of up and coming guy he's done some really cool stuff he's from europe so his english is not even his first language and he is right. crushing it on the copywriting scene awesome um and he's done he's got a whole video series we'll talk about where he's analyzed a hundred different famous pieces of copy Ooh, all the way back nice. from you know old timey swipe files to more recent vsls yeah. and all kinds of stuff so um he's cool he does a good job so it's yeah. it's interesting to see it'll be interesting to see somebody with you know from central or eastern europe actually i think is where he's at um and just kind of how he came into the world of american direct response basically and, right and get his story and everything yeah. he's doing so that'll be fun good stuff Good stuff. Looking forward to it. Um, like I said, a great guest today. Very Ogilvy-esque yeah. um, in terms of uh, his style. So um, you definitely want to check this episode out. Uh, uh, episode 302. We'll see you guys next week on uh, episode 303. Sean, it's been fun, man. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. All right. <laughs>